Hi, Joe Glavin at City Floor Supply. Welcome to another, another live session of video. Uh, we are in our pro shop this time, uh, standing in front of an end cap that has actually three items here. Um, so what we're gonna focus on today are hand tools. And a lot of times we'll go over you know, larger equipment, um, the equipment that you normally get the most production out of. Hummel sanders, Galaxy sanders, Clark buffers, Clark sanders, edgers, you know, all of that kind of equipment, big vacuums. But, you know, the, the detail work is, you know, where the professional makes his craft sing. We have uh, scrapers, we have hand miter cutters, we have staple pullers, glue guns, white oak test kit, and the prime jack, um, floor jack tool. So all of these tools um, really just help you get your job done a little bit easier. Uh, hopefully a little less knee soreness and back breaking. And I say that because you also have guys on your crews that may be new um, and starting them off with hand tools as opposed to you know electric miter saws and that kind of thing might be a good transition um, i know for a fact a lot of contractors have a difficult time sharpening scraper blades norton has come out with this just really really neat uh, tool and it's a jig so they have their scraper which has um, some great design features to it. It's a comfortable handle. I do sound like Ron Popeil here, and I apologize, but it's really neat. It's a comfortable handle. It has a spot for you to put your palm into to put some pressure on it. Uh, it's angled, and the reason for the angle is so that we can get into corners and still scrape. Um, just, you know, really well thought out. The same unit will fit both size scrapers so i believe they're an inch and a half and looks like three quarters of an inch somewhere in there um i hope it's not metric but it might be so the anyhow the um the scrapers this kit comes with both scrapers uh, both blades and a sharpening jig and you might think hey i've been doing this for 25 years and i don't need to know how to sharpen my scraper or i don't need a jig to do it well you might not but maybe your new guys do, because what do they do when they sharpen their scraper? They'll file it, they'll file it round, they'll file it off, and as soon as that scraper edge isn't flat, that scraper isn't any good, right? So, um, the jig is real simple. This little portion here fits on the bar, and you literally just and that's it. And this is one very sharp scraper. Um, and I'm gonna demo it down there because we're gonna do some other things down below. But it is, I mean, well, I just have to show you. It's just, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it is just a sharp, sharp tool. Um, the jig itself, very, very well designed. You can loosen up. Uh, these screws here and then move the file to a different portion of the of the file so you get multiple so not only are you using less file the surface area that you're using on a file when you come down this way is greater you will wear out that file quicker and now we're only using one small portion of the file and we get to move it every time that that file area is worn so like what a great idea. Um, so, and like I said, I know everybody knows how to sharpen a scraper. I've seen all kinds of methods for sharpening a scraper, but this guy and this jig, just a great idea. Um, so anyhow, the Norton uh, scraper and the sharpening jig, and they all come as a kit and just really nice and it's a new tool everybody's always asking me well what's new in the industry joe what's new in the industry this is new in the industry and it's simple but it's new and it works 
the next hand tool, which is actually probably something that people don't even know exists. Um, hopefully you do. And it's a, a hand miter tool. Um, this is made by Crane and it's a neat little unit. And the whole purpose for this is to save you from having one to bring in a hand miter saw or an electric miter saw or slide miter box, whichever you're using on the job site and allow you to cut trim. That would be uh, Scotia molding, cove molding, probably the smaller cove, the bigger cove might crack, uh, and shoe and quarter round in various species. Now, it's probably going to be limited to, I would say, domestic species like red oak, white oak. That's what you're using mostly anyway, and specifically for prime pine or poplar. So, the, I mean, the unit, you've got a... Uh, You've got a blade here, this large blade, and it's replaceable. So, and it's an easy fix. You just unscrew the pin, knock it out, pull the blade out, put a new one in. And it is marked for uh, 90 or zero, and then 22 and a half, 45. Uh, you know, all of the various degrees that you would need for angles around outside corners, inside corners, that kind of thing. So, um, Everybody always asks, well, you're cutting pine. That's easy. So we'll just cut a piece of pine. And yeah, I know it's easy. Actually, this is, yeah, this is pine. So prime pine, very easy to cut. How's it do on oak? Well, I've got oak shoe here. Um, you know, I've got a nice sharp blade so I can either cross cut it. And I'm not as strong as I used to be, but it still cuts it. Um, very easily and then we could do this on a 45 again sorry if I sound like you know an infomercial here but you know, that is a sharp edge there's no tear out on that um, you know cabinet makers will do miters for for various trim and they'll use a sharp blade like a miter box but not a rotating saw or a hand saw that's the kind of cut you get with this so that was red oak. Uh, white oak performs the same way. You up and down the steps, right? You just put in a set of steps, uh, new treads, or you're doing a retro tread fix. Uh, you're putting Scotia underneath the bull nose of the tread. You know, what a great way to miter it to do the return on the outside of an open tread staircase than to cut the Scotia without having to go up and down the stairs to saw off the little piece on your miter box. I mean, you could just do this right at the job. Um, it's really a great idea. Uh, we sell a lot of these and they work. Uh, so again, a simple tool, something that could get overlooked, easy to put in your toolbox, works every day. Uh, if it's getting dull, you find that you're just clamping too hard, just change the blade out. It's, I mean, it's that easy. So um, we are going to glue up some of this because we're going to talk about a glue. But before I get there, um, I want to talk about the white oak test kit. Again, this isn't a hand tool, but it's definitely a tool in the sense that this is going to help you identify the difference between red oak and white oak. You know, there are several ways to identify red oak and white oak in the field. After you scrape an area, you know, you're trying to figure out what the species is. After you get the stain off, um, you're going to tie in or tooth in to the other floor if there's an addition. All of those things necessitate you knowing what the species is. So if you don't know the difference between red and white oak, because old red oak, old growth red oak, red oak that has really old patina to it, can look like white oak. We see it all the time. Guys bring in pieces of white oak or red oak for us to identify for them. And it happens every day. So we're good at it, but we're good at it for a couple reasons. We understand that the species kind of has a fingerprint, right? Red oak has medullary ray lines that are short. White oaks are longer. That's why red or white oak looks better when it's rifting quartered. Um, also, if you look at the end grain in red oak, the pores are open 
and in white oak, they're filled. It's just the nature of the two species. So those are kind of two identifiers that you could do in the field. But we had a piece come in yesterday, and this is the truth. Yesterday, it, the guy showed us a picture of the floor, and it looked like a white oak floor. I mean, it just had such, it was rift and quartered. It had big medullary ray flecking. Um, and the piece that he brought us looked white, but it didn't have any of the markers. So we had to break out the test kit and show them how to use it, and it worked. It turned out that it was red, and everybody here thought it was white. So it does work, um, and I'm gonna show it to you now. So I'm gonna show you the difference in uh, red and the difference in white, and what we've got uh, essentially are two solvents marked A and B. We've got um, little test Petri dishes here that we can use for um, each one. And then you get a set of directions that are, you know, image, graphical, very easy to follow. Uh, I'm going to just explain it to you. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take one of our nice, sharp Norton scrapers. Um, I'm going to take some... Take some white oak. Come on, look at that shaving. That is just perfect. Uh, right, so we're going to put that in there, that's white, and then I'm going to take some red, which, the power of video, I've got it right here. Everybody likes that sound, don't they? All right, it might be too much, let's just take that out. Let me take that one out. Okay. So we just kind of saturate these guys with these solvents here, part A. All right? Then part B. And what the test card tells you is if you have white oak. Um, these solvents are going to react with what we call the extratives that are in these species. And that extrative in white oak is tannic acid. So this reaction, and it might take, oh, maybe five, ten minutes, and um, you'll see the difference. Uh, I can even see it happening already. You can kind of see it drawing out like a pinkish red fluid. So we'll check back on that. Um, eventually the white oak one will turn like a green black color and that's the reaction. So uh, red oak, it may turn a little because there is just a hint of tannin in red oak sometimes. It just depends on the region that it's growing. Um, but it shouldn't turn at all. And well, you can actually see it happening now. You know, it's, it's starting to turn. It'll, eventually, this will go black. The one on your right, my left. So, not a physical tool, but definitely something that should be in your toolbox. Um, they're not expensive. They can save you a huge headache of buying the wrong species. If you're not on the job site and your guys install it, and it's not the correct color, you, you're just going to fight an uphill battle to get that white or red oak to look like the existing floor, particularly if you're toothing in. So just an, a simple, easy tool. This will do several testings, probably more than you'll do in a year. Um, and the kit's sealed. The bottles, you, you'll probably have very little evaporation from them. Um, but well worth it. So we'll move on to um, the carpet staple. Now this is the only thing that I can't really like round po peel to you. Uh, I can't show you how to undo it or take a staple out because we're a wood store, a, a wood supply house and we don't have carpet. Um, but this is for carpet staples. And what made me think of showing this today is we have a gentleman that works here who bought a house and We'll be moving into it shortly, 
and pulled up the carpet and his uh, wood floors underneath that carpet were covered in carpet staples that they used to put down the backer pad. And he ended up buying one of these tools and has been doing this after work every night, probably for the last three to four days. Um, but he said that this thing is a lifesaver because you normally use a screwdriver, channel locks and pry them all out. Well, this guy allows you just to slide like slide underneath the staple, get into it once it's raised, and then pop it out. And what happens is the force, when you lean forward, grabs the crown of the staple and doesn't let it go. It's such a great idea. And this shoe doesn't allow for it to damage the floor. It's just such a great, simple idea. And, and to be honest, crane in general, um, has those kinds of tools, you know, the undercut saws, all of that stuff. You know, they, they really concentrate on hand tools for the installers. And just a, a really neat concept, so I just thought I'd show it to you. Um, it's the Crane 126 uh, staple remover. It's a pretty neat product. You might want to earmark it or bookmark it on the website so that you can uh, take a look at it later. Okay, minor blades. So what we'll do is we'll talk about glue guns. Uh, I actually have this heating up now. Uh, the glue is ready. This probably takes about five, 10 minutes to get ready. Um, I'm currently using the number 40 uh, flex adhesive and uh, fits the Fasten Master. I think it's half inch in diameter. Um, but we also carry the 180. The difference is the open time. Um, the 180 is a longer open time and the uh, 40 is a shorter open time. So about 40 seconds and about 180 seconds. That's how they're rated and that's why they're numbered that way. Typically, um, the, you have, I, get, I forget the 40, yeah, is about five minutes and then this one is eight minutes before full setup. So, uh, but working time, it's, it's pretty quick. So if you have your things cut and you glue them up and set them in, you have just a quick amount of time to move them and get them, you know, the miters to match up, that kind of thing. Uh, what a great tool. What a great tool for, you know, we'll stick with the stair theme. If you're doing Scotia on outside returns on an open staircase, say the treads are return open miters to the left, uh, as opposed to a box staircase where it's just a square step um, and you need to put Scotia on the outside uh, or even the scroll work, uh, just about anything. You can even glue steps up with this. Now, I probably would use bonus um, sausage adhesive for that, but you can even do that with this. Uh, you can certainly glue the risers on a retro tread refit with this. So lots of options. Um, the last board in a row, um, if you don't have the Primatech 900 track edge, you can use glue. The nice thing about these, these are called APAO adhesives, and um, yeah, it's a mouthful. It's amorphous poly alpha olefin. Um, it is, it's a flexible adhesive. So once it cures, it still gives the board ability to expand and contract without pulling off the substrate that you've glued it to. So they're good units. Um, they do come with needle tips. So if you need, um, say you have an engineer floor uh, where the glue didn't adhere and you have a hollow pocket, you can drill through that board, shoot the adhesive in with this guy, and then uh, put a weight on it and you're, it's ready to go, you know, no more hollow sound. So some really good functions with this. And um, the tips do, uh, they just screw off. I'm not gonna do it now because that tip is hot. Um, but I am gonna go down and glue a piece of molding just to this board um, so you can have a look at it. So I'm gonna cut a piece 
of shoe here. There we go. And I'm gonna bring it down. So just like you would be right on a job site, um, if you got a miter corner, but we can get our miter or our shoe set that in and I, like I said you know I've got a little bit of open time with it squared up and I didn't put any nail holes in that I don't have to fill it I don't have to match any stain none of that um, it's just a great tool and it's already set I can't move it and I'm not just making that up I can't I physically can't move it um, so pretty good units, I'm just gonna turn that off. Um, one thing to note, when these guys, if you wanna change over from 180, or from 40 to 180 in the adhesives, you kinda of have to exhaust this and then put the new stick in. You don't wanna be pulling these out, even if some is exposed, because the feeder unit, um, you could damage it. So definitely, um, and put this on a piece of uh, cardboard or something when you're using it. I'm on a concrete floor here, so it will drip um, so that you can get around making a mess. Uh, so that is that. Uh, we are also going to take, I'm going to show you the prime jack. I'm going to go right back down here. So Prime Jack from Primatech uh, has two purposes. It's a dual jack unit, which means it will pull boards in and it will push boards in. And the reason that we would want to do that, right? Sometimes you're doing an engineered floor you want one part to set so you can spin around and go the other way, uh, particularly if the room is really wide. Uh, if you wanna do something like that, you're gonna need something that pushes and pulls. Now, yes, you can use straps. Uh, you could use blue tape, everybody uses that stuff. Um, this is just another method. So you can rack out and get it pushed together tight. Uh, most people use these as a pull, so they're literally gonna take you know, a board, get it in so pushing forward on this unit pushes the paw springs that engage this ratchet and allow this to move in and out we drop it down crank it um, that pull on that board or that push on that board and I'm pulling this piece in is no joke um, I have seen these move um, bottom plates of walls that are two by fours that are nailed in they will they will move the wall um, it is a strong gear and you've got a heck of a lever up here so you know again pushing it forward releases it allows us to pop it out um, you know real quick I will show you a push and it's pretty simple um, all we're gonna do is I use I usually like to get this push your past the frame and then um, undo the thumb screws here and we'll drop off the hook that makes this a pull and now we have a push and you can you can do a couple things you can actually put a board in front of this Now we have a unit 
that'll push the floor in and allow us to either get it nailed up or let the glue set. So again, it's a, a multi-tool, it's a hand tool. I'm pretty sure I don't know a, I mean, uh, you can put a screwdriver, drive it into the plywood, crank it back and nail up the board. Um, or you can pull in a long board by putting a nice piece along the wall, pull the whole rack in and nail it up. So you know, your options for this unit are you know, kind of in, in the install world, they're just a necessity. And again, it assembles really easy. Just put that back on there. Add the thumb screws. And we're back in pull mode. So, you know, that's the prime jack um, from Primatech. That's a Festool CS CXS. What we had was the, uh, the White Oak test kit. And, you know, about 10 minutes ago, we tested both species, uh, red and white oak, and these are the shavings. So on both shavings, we saturated them with solvent A and solvent B in there and just kind of moistened everything up. And what we're getting is this is you know turning blackish green and this is pretty much staying you know a soaked red and that is our identifier i mean it's a chemical treatment to identify uh, white oak from red oak and you just do it from shavings if you have any suggestions uh, if you'd like to see these products feel free uh, you can visit us at cityfloorsupply.com and or give us a call. We'll be happy to answer any questions you have.